It's not accusing them of changing the text. It's accusing them of lying about the text. Specifically uses the word take it, and if you're not given this, be cautious. So that's talking about words. It's words. it's yeah yes the words that are spoken. No, but words also words in Revelation as well. That's what that's what the words. What what what? But it's not clear that it's talking about a text here. But then the thing is, you have to use the brain and say where it says they alter the word from their pla I, places, places. The irony is, you've gone to the very thing that I'm accusing all you Muslims of doing. What? Which is to displacing the words of your own book. No, but that's your about. book says one thing, and you're saying something else. No, but the Jews, this applies to you, not the Jews. But why would he use the word? Why would God say the Jews? They are listeners for the sake of Allah. Why would he say that? Listen, listen. talking about us. Can listen, everybody, listen carefully, and tell me if you hear something that says they change the words of the book, the written form. Because it doesn't say that. No as well, man. It says, "O messenger, let those who hurry to fall into disbelief." grieve you of such who say we believe with their mouths but in their hearts have no faith and of the jews are men who listen much and eagerly to lies so they listen and they lie they listen to the book and they lie about the book listen to others so in other words don't listen to the people that listen to the book and lie about the book listen to others who listen to the book and speak the truth about the book Lies, listen to others who have not come to you. We're talking about listening, not writing. They change the words from their places. They say, if you are given this, take it. But if you are not given this, then be aware. We're not talking about writing. We're talking about listening. And yes, the Quran accuses the Jews of lying about what the Torah teaches. But the Quran does not accuse the Torah of being corrupted. So Surah 2. Well, we're on like the fifth verse now of, of something that's going to prove. Surah yeah, 2. So I'm not saying that this is specifically talking about um, the Torah or the Injil. Okay, so why are we going to it again? Because in the Quran it clearly mentions that there are people that are writing yeah, the book with yeah. their own hands and saying this from Allah. Yeah. So the scholars might have um, affirmed, you know, have said that, I don't know. So, so let's listen to the words of this, what the Quran says. Then woe to those who write the book with their own hands and then say this is from Allah to purchase it with a little price. Woe to them for what their hands have written and woe to them for what they earn thereby. Now, one second. Does it say the Injil? No. Does it say the Torah? No. It can only be the what? No, it doesn't. It he says it can only be. Yeah. It what? can only be. What else? What? 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 Let me finish. Let me finish. What else? Or I shout. Let me finish or I shout. <laughs> so, the Quran says, woe to those who write forgeries in the name of Allah. A bit like the Quran. But it says, it says, woe to them. So anyone who writes a book and says this is from Allah, it's saying woe to them. I agree. There were people doing that plenty. How many hadiths were written down that have words of Allah written in them that were fake? How many gospels were written down by Gnostics and heretics that said that this was from God? This was common currency in the Middle East. Lots of people were doing it. It isn't talking about the New Testament, the Injil or the Torah. It's talking about people who are writing books and saying this is from Allah. It hasn't identified the book as the one being written that's fake as the Injil or the Torah. But in other verses of the Quran that I've quoted to these guys on multiple occasions, it says that the Torah and the Injil are confirmed by the Quran. They are read as authoritative. They are told, Muslims and Jews and Christians are told to live by the Torah and the Injil. And I'll find that for you now. Let me find a verse before you no, no, find no, no, another no, verse. Wait, let me let me just comment on that. Yeah, this is clearly talking about those that come before the, the children of Israel. Yeah, because if you read the previous verses, Allah is speaking about the children of Israel. He's speaking about the things that they've done, and he's talking about how they used to change the book. So it's clearly saying that the scriptures that the children of Israel had, they used to change it. Yeah, with their own hands and ascribe it to Allah. So there's the answer to what you've been screaming. Hold on, he's he's wrong again. Listen to what the text says carefully. It says, and there are among them, and then in brackets, it puts Jews. So the previous verse doesn't identify the Jews. You've got to go earlier, earlier. But we'll give it to them because in the earlier verses, it does. 
unlettered people who know not the book. Now, if they don't know the book, that means the book is there to know. They know not the book, but they trust upon false desires and book guess, then woe to those who write the book. So in other words, the Quran is saying, if you write a book after your own heart, rather than follow the Torah and the Injil and the Quran, woe to you. That's what the Quran is saying. What the Quran is not saying is that the Torah and the Injil are lost. It's saying that if you write a book and say it's from Allah, you are lost. No, these verses are saying that the Beni Israel, those that had charge over their scripture, have corrupted it. Where does it say that? It says it here it in the previous verse. Where does it say that? It says that. So the whole, the whole verse. Where does it say it? Show me. It's talk, look, and among. Well, talk, go on then. Quote it, quote it to me. Where does whole, it say listen, it? The, all the previous verses are talking about. Don't be ambiguous. The, Show me a specific talking about, verse. It's talking about the Beni Show me a specific verse. Show me. He's talking about well, show me then. Yeah. He keeps saying it's there, it's there. Well, read it. So, woe to those who write the scripture with their own hands. The scripture. Then they say it is from Allah. Yes. Yeah, it's talking about yes. these people. Woe to the people that came before. Yes. Who are the Ben Israel. Wait, one second. Where does it identify that scripture as the Torah and the Angel? Yeah, I'm not saying it does talk about it's the It's not saying that it does. I'm not saying it's talking about the Angel. Thank you. So, the Quran is not wait, saying wait, wait, that wait, it does. Let me just say. The reason why I'm saying it's not talking about the Angel. Thank you. That's what I'm saying. No one can, can clearly say to you that the Injil means the Gospel or the Injil means that. We still don't even really know what the Injil is. That's the first thing. But what we know is that the, the five books, the, the Chumash, that was given to the, to the Ben Israel, yeah, they, they, Allah is clearly saying, or maybe some later scriptures that was given to them, that they have corrupted it in the past. And Allah is saying, he's warning those that do that. It's there. Right, I'm sorry, but it's but not there. No offence, no offence. But there, brother, clear. brother, I'm sorry, it's, it's not there and it's not clear. All right, let me read. It's I'll neither read. there nor is it clear. Right, let me read. One let me second, read. I'm going to reply to what you said. I asked him, where does it say the Injil and the Torah? And he said, without me prompting him. The reason why I'm saying it's not talking about the Injil. Thank you, that's what I'm saying. Course. So he's contradicting himself because now he's saying that it is talking about the Torah and the Injil. So, let me just find an ayah for you. No, we're not all oh, lambing. Here we go. And here's the shouting match, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry, but our polite conversation has just ended. Our polite conversation has just ended. Because this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. No, where's the money? Where's the money? You pick on. Where's the money? Where's the money? Lamin. People who come here. Lamin, where's the money? Ladies and gentlemen. The reason why I'm not going to debate Lamin is because this is what it descends to. No, 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 no. And because, and because, and because, and because, and I'm going to be very open here, I find this man a despicable man. I genuinely find him a despicable man. He is not a man of his word. He is a liar and a deceiver. And he's also someone who's not competent for intellectual debate. I know I'm having a debate with you guys. If you want to walk away, you can do. Uh, that's fine, you walk away. You won't walk away. So let us continue our conversation. I don't want him to be in this conversation. No, because I find him a despicable man. I know, no, no. I'm going to debate you three. I don't want to debate this clown. So, so let us, I want to find you a verse. So, I'm here. If you I want to listen to Lamin, stay here. If you guys want to continue want to our conversation, listen. we're going to move over there. To Come on, I want to talk to you guys. So, so, listen to what I'm saying to you. I find him, are you listening? I find him a despicable man. He's a gremlin in the park. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, the reason why I don't want to debate Lamin is because I find him a despicable human being who breaks his word and is dishonorable. How many men in this park heard him say if I debate him, he would pay me 500 pounds. Put your hand up if you heard him made that. That's what you heard him say. And has he ever paid me? Has he ever paid? He is a despicable man who is not a man of his word. 
That is why I won't debate him. When he pays me £500, I'll debate him. He shouldn't make a promise that he can't keep. What, do you think that's wrong? Do you think you should break your word? Is it wrong? Is it wrong? Is it wrong? Is it wrong? Thank you. All of your brothers just condemned you. All of your brothers just condemned you. All of your brothers just condemned you. So, so, I want to find you a verse in the Surah. Maybe you can help me. Let me just make the point about, let me respond to what you're saying about the, the Torah and the Injil. In the Quran, Allah does not say that the Torah and the Injil are corrupt. Yeah, I'm not going to stand there and tell you that Allah says that the Torah and the Injil are corrupt. Allah doesn't say that in the Quran. The brother has just admitted the very point that I'm making. Which is that the Quran does not teach that the Torah and the Injil are corrupt. But now Abbas says it does. So who's right? So who's right? The Muslims don't know what their Quran teaches them. Let me tell you what I say. What I say, what I say is that the Quran does not say that the Torah it does not use the name Torah and the Injil and say that they are corrupt. It does not say that. It doesn't have so who's right, this guy or this guy? They're both right. They're both right. Chapter 2, verse 17. Wait, 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 brother, I'm looking for my own verse. You'll just have to get yours. I'm going to prove it to you that Muslims, early Muslims, believe that indeed the Bible has been corrupted. I'm not arguing that. That's not my argument, Abbas. Abbas, that's not my argument. Right, Surah 5, Ayah 68. The Quran states this. Say... This is to Muhammad. O oh, people of the scripture. Who's that? Jews and Christians. You have nothing as regards to guidance until you act in accordance with the Torah and the Injil. And what has not... Listen. Listen. Because you're about to be embarrassed by your own book. Listen. To the Torah and the Injil and what has now been sent down to you from your Lord, the Quran. Verily that which has been sent down to you from your Lord increases most of them in their obstinate rebellion and disbelief. So the Quran instructs Jews and Christians to follow the Torah, the Injil, and the Quran. If they're following the Torah and the Injil, that means the Quran believes that the Torah and the Injil are there to follow. Otherwise, the command of the Quran is nonsense. He read chapter 5, verse 68. What comes first, 68 or 48? Let's read what it says. And we have revealed to you, O Muhammad, the book in truth, meaning Quran, confirming that which prescribed it, uh, uh, preceded it, of the scripture and a criterion yeah, over it. That's what I said. So Quran is a criterion over the, the scripture. Books, the what is criterion? Criterion is a yardstick. If anything goes against, you reject it. Anything goes with, you accept it. That's the first point. Second point, chapter 2, verse 79, it says, Woe to those who write with their own hands and say it is from Allah. Woe to those who do that for a little earning. Now, how the companions understood that verse? Let's go to the Hadith. How the companion understood that verse? Allah has revealed to you that the people of the scriptures have changed with their own hands. That was revealed to them. And they have said, as regards to their uh, changed scriptures, this is from Allah in order to get some worldly gain. This is exactly the interpretation of chapter 2, verse 79. So who's saying it? Uh, Ibn Abbas. So this is your answer. May Muslims understood that. The Bible and the uh, Injil and the storage is uh, corrupted. May I reply? And Quran also says chapter 5, verse 13 and 14. They have changed it and forgotten it. Chapter uh, 5, verse 13 and 14 says they have changed it and they have forgotten it. Talking about Jews and Christians. We'll come to so that. This is the, we'll this is the answer you were looking so for. So allow me to reply. So I'm just going to deal with a couple of points. Firstly, Abbas appeals to hadiths that were written 200 years <laughs> later. 200 years later, by which time, by which time, notice he's interrupting. Notice he interrupted. Did I interrupt Abbas? No. Did you just see him interrupt me? Yes. 
Do you know why, ladies and gentlemen? Because his dean has failed him. Mohammed has failed his heart. And he's interrupting again. And he's interrupting again. Why is it? Whenever I have to speak, I have to shout. But when the Muslims speak, I am quiet. Did I interrupt him? No, no, answer the, be honest. Speak against your brother if it's the truth. Did I interrupt him? Thank you. Was it right for him to interrupt me? Abbas, your Muslim brothers are correcting you. Are you finished, Abbas? Are you done? No, I'm not. Be quiet. I will I will refuse you. Right. So Abbas. It's just a drama. One second, Abbas. Calm down. Because Muslims complain. There we go again. He just can't shut up, can he? Do you want to listen to my reply or to Abbas? Abbas, shut up! Make your point. Shut up, Abbas. Are you done? You know what it is? It's that supremacy complex. He has to have the last word because he believes as a Muslim that he's superior. And as a Muslim who's superior, he has to have the last word. Islamic superiority complex right there in Abbas. Now, Abbas, thank you. Quiet. There we go. I can't speak, can I, without interruption? Are you done? Are you done? Are you done? Are you done? Are we done? Are we done? Okay. Abbas quoted a hadith that was given hundreds of years later. I'm not interested in his spurious hadiths. I don't care about this collection of hadiths that every time Christians quote hadiths to the Muslims, as Abbas pointed out, that are sahih but embarrassing to Muslims, the Muslims chuck them under the bus. When we point out that Muhammad had sex with a nine-year-old child, the Muslims chuck them under the bus. When we point out that Muhammad permitted his followers to rape female prisoners, they chuck them under the bus, just like that. When we point out that the hadiths demonstrate that the Quran has been changed, they chuck them under the bus. So I don't care, I don't care about their hadiths. Notice, where is Shamsi? Where's Shamsi? Shamsi! 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 Who's running from Shamsi? No one's running from Shamsi. Let's go back to the Quran that he quoted. Now notice, he didn't address the verse that I quoted to him. Let me quote it again. Say, O oh Muhammad, O oh people of the scripture, you have nothing. Everybody say nothing. nothing. Say it again because Abbas wasn't listening. Nothing. You have nothing as guidance until you act according to the Torah and the Injil and the Quran. So what's that? Torah, Injil, and Quran. That's the Quranic worldview. You believe and follow all the books. But then he quoted a verse in the Quran that said that the Quran is a standard over the other books. What does that mean? Are you listening, Abbas? I'm addressing your verse. Muslims believe in a concept of abrogation. So what Allah reveals at one time, he can change at another time. And it is in this way that the Quran is a standard over the Hadiths and the Torah. Let me give one example. The Torah of Moses says that you can't eat camel meat. But we all know Muhammad loved camel meat. So the Quran is a standard over the Torah because the Quran will permit Muhammad to do something that the Injil forbids. The Injil forbids you to look at lust in your eyes to a woman. But we know that Muhammad looked at lust in his eyes to one of his own relative's wives. So in this way, the Quran 
is a standard over the Injil and the Torah. It doesn't mean that the Quran is saying that the Torah and the Injil has been changed. When you want to understand any scripture, you understand as holistically, yeah? What the scriptures are saying. Now here, after understanding all the scriptures, chapter 5 verse 48 already told us, Quran is a Muhammad, chapter 279 says, they have changed. Five, 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 548. Says Quran is a watcher. Quran is a watcher of the scripture. 279 say they write with their own hand and they say it is from God. Then 513 and 14 says they, they have forgotten and they have distorted. Chapter 5 verse 13 says they have distorted it and 514 says they have forgotten. Now after understanding all that, when we come back to chapter 5 verse 68, it says tell them to go back to what God has revealed. So we need to understand what God has revealed, not what you write with your own hands. Not what you forgot and yet you writing, meaning what God has revealed and we Muslims believe in the Bible there are still words of God are still in there. Only if you use Quran as a yardstick, Quran as a Muhammad, Quran will judge what is right and what is wrong. So that is what 568 is saying. It's not saying go back to your book and believe everything he says. No. Remember the, the key word here is what Allah has revealed. So what Allah has revealed you need to find out, not what you write with your own hand. So I without using any hadith i refute your very point you were trying to make now that's what i'm going to say okay and i'll say may allah guide you may allah guide me as well abbas I'm, abbas I'm not here to debate. Uh, abbas, 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 abbas is going to run away now abbas is going to run away now. Okay, i'm running away yes abbas I'm is running away bye bye abbas no no that's fine but let me just let me just reply to what abbas said because abbas is lying to you when you go to surah 5 ayah 48 we read this and we believe and we have sent down to you, O Muhammad, the book, this Quran, in truth, confirming the scripture that came before it. So what? Yeah? So if it's confirming, it's not corrupt. That, that, That's what this verse is saying. When it says that it is a standard over it, it means that the Quran is making permissible things that the Torah was said was impermissible. This is what Surah 10, Ayah 94 says, so if you, O Muhammad, are in doubt concerning that which we have revealed unto you, what was revealed unto Muhammad? The Quran. This is what it says. If you were in doubt that your name is written in the Torah and the Injil, so it's saying that his name is written in the Torah and the Injil, can you find me his name written in the Torah and the Injil? No, you can't. Trust me, no Muslim can. Yep. Then ask those. Then ask those, are you listening to this bit? No. Then ask those who are reading the book, the Torah and the Injil before you. So who is he going to ask? Before you. No, he's been told before to, how can he ask people that are dead? No, think, no, I'm asking you to think. Because the Jews and the Christians were reading the Torah and the Injil before Muhammad was made a prophet. So who is he talking about when he says, ask those who were reading it before you? It can't be dead people. It's got to be people that are alive, which means, which means that the Torah and the Injil, according to the Quran, are there in the seventh century in the Arabian Peninsula. Because the, according to the Quran, the Injil is the word of Allah. And does the Quran say that anyone can change the word of Allah? No, no, listen. And recite what has been revealed to you of the book, which is the Quran, O Muhammad, of your Lord. Recite and under right. This is the brackets. None can change his words. Yeah, and none will find a refuge other than him. When it says none can change his words, is that a fact? Yes, it's fact. Was the Torah in the jail the words of Allah? Yes. Perfect. There you go. What has been revealed to the book? When it says the book, it means the Quran. It does not mean the Bible. Or the Injil, yes or no? Because when it says, it, book, it says the book. And yes, it's talking about the Quran. Yes, yes, yes. And then none can change his words. Correct. His words. Is so was the, the Torah and the Injil originally Allah's words? No, but he's been about about the Quran now. Too. So Allah's what he's book. saying is people could change Allah's words in the past, but not now. No, he's not saying. Oh, so it's not words. saying that. No, no, I'm just saying it has been changed. The so Bible so people could change the words of Allah in the past. Yes. Well, so man. Allah's words can be changed. Yes. I mean, so how do you know they can't be changed now? Because he, first he says he is the guardian of this book. He says yeah. in the Quran. I'm not. I'm, I'm not sure of the exact verse. But he says he's the guardian of this book. Yes. He says over here, Wasn't he also the, the God of the Torah and the Injil? Sorry? 
Wasn't he also the God of the Torah and the, the Angel? Torah. So, anyway, are the Torah and the Angel less valuable to Allah than the Quran? No, I'm just, no, he's speaking about the Quran. Qur yeah, but I'm the thing, the Quran, and I'm asking you to think. Go on. Go on. This is why I reject the Quran. Why that? Because the Quran is saying that the Torah was the word of Allah, and the Angel was the word of Allah, and that all the books are equal. That's and then it's saying that none can change the words of Allah. It says no, the there's Quran. another verse where it just says none can change the words of Allah. Where that? I'm trying to find it right now. Right. But the point is, no, think logically. If it says none can change the words of Allah, and someone changes the Injil, then that means people can change the words of Allah. Before it says the book. The book is the Quran. So what you're, you're saying is Allah cares more about the Quran than he does about the no, Injil. The and that's the, the problem, bro. That's the problem. The Quran was the final revelation. So that's the problem. So, the other ones, so Allah the didn't final. care about the Injil. I'm not saying that. It's so why same, did he allow it to be changed? So why did he allow it to be changed? It doesn't say over there, but I'm just saying over there. So why does he allow it to be changed? the Quran. So why does he allow it to be changed? Bro, even Christians say it's changed. Why does he allow it to be changed? Christians say it's changed. Yes, this is not a problem for us. What means it's not a problem for us. But you're changing the topic and you're avoiding my question. My question again. Why did he allow the Injil to be changed? I'm not God to like decide, mate. So if you if you have something and you look after it and you have another thing and you allow it to be abused, what does that say about not, what your no, value it's, it's to not, those things? It's, not abuse, it's saying it's one thing has value it's and it's another doesn't. They're not of equal Bro, value. And what has been revealed to die of the Yes, and then he goes on to say that none can change the words of Allah. In the same verse, bro, what can you understand? It says the Quran. I agree, it's talking about the Quran. But the principle can also be applied to the Injil and the Torah. Why not? Because the Quran is the final revelation. Tell me something about the Quran, right? In, a, in terms of its essence, in terms of its nature, that is not true about the Injil. Is the Quran the word of Allah? Yes. Is the Injil the word of Allah? Yes. Is no, the Torah well, the word of Allah? Now, in the past. So my the point is, if it was the words of Allah yes. and Allah allowed it to be changed, we can only draw one of two conclusions. Either it was never the words of Allah and thus it could be changed, no. or Allah didn't care about it enough in which it can be changed. No, if he didn't care about it... And the word of your Lord has been fulfilled in truth and in justice. None can change his words, and he is the all-hearer and the all-knower. The only conclusion we can draw is either the Injil and the Torah was not the word of Allah, or Allah didn't care about it. The word, the verse before it, it yes. says the Quran. So, so what are you saying? Shall mate? I seek judge other than Allah while no, it is no, he who has no, sent no, down no, unto you the book, the book explained uh, in detail those unto whom we gave the scripture. Who are those people? What's the book? Who are those What's people? The, the Quran. The, the Quran. And, the and then it goes, it nobody can change explained in detail those unto whom we gave the scripture, the Torah and the Injil. Know that it is revealed from your Lord in truth, so be not you of those who doubt. So it says in the verse, the Quran, the Torah and the Injil and then it says and the word of your Lord has been fulfilled in truth and in justice none can change his words does it say over there the Quran or not it says the book yes does he also say the Torah and the Angel where the hell is this yeah shall I seek look read it with me bro say O Muhammad Shall I seek judge other than Allah while it is he who has sent down unto you the book, the Quran, explained in detail. Those unto whom we gave the scripture, the Torah and the Injil, know that it is revealed from your Lord in truth, so be not of those who doubt. And the word of your Lord has been fulfilled in truth and in justice. None can change his words. So the Quran is identified as the word of Allah, the Torah is identified as the word of Allah, the Injil is identified as the word of Allah, and it says that none can change his words. You don't believe your Quran. Right, let's, let's move on.